So today we're going to compare an ICF wall versus a wood wall of equivalent R value, if that's possible. Okay. In Canada, we have some new energy building codes that have been out in the last few years that are making it harder and harder for a two by six wall to meet the new energy standards for the building code. Okay. So, you know, us as a company, we've seen it coming. We looked at ICF, we've been doing it for a long time now and just becoming more and more clear why I like it so much, why I think there's a huge future in it. It's just such a simple system. It almost takes a while for it to sink in and how cool it is, how innovative it is, and how it's simply, I don't think it can be beat, to be honest. And while well, I'm a little biased, but hey, you can, uh, this is food for thought for everybody. Okay, so a simple ICF wall. You have continuous EPS insulation on both sides. You fill it with concrete, you're done. Some people think, oh, I just only do my basement with it, but why not just go one step further and do the main floor? Then you have a house disaster proof, tornado proof. It has like a four hour fire rating. So I had a guy call me the other day and we had a good chat. He has a ton of knowledge. He wants to price a house, an ICF house for a client to his. He phones me up, we have a good chat, we get into some debates, and he says, okay, like if we can get a two by six wall to compare to ICF in our value, what price is that versus an ICF wall? Long story short of that is it came to the conclusion like you can't compare to an ICF once you know about it, but you know, let's debate this a little bit between us. Basically, this will cover the conversation that him and I had. For, for today, let's say we can build a two by six wall, same R value, I haven't crunched the numbers, and let's say you can build it for cheaper, less money. By the end of this video, are you still gonna wanna build a two by six wall? Let's see what happens, okay? So let's talk, let's say we build this thing conventional, right? It's the most inexpensive way. So we got an eight inch concrete wall, there's our concrete, okay? Now, because we're trying to match an ICF wall, we gotta put, I think, at least two inches of EPS foam on the outside. The Canadian building code, what they look at is instead of saying, oh, a two by six wall is an R20 or an R22, it's not just the bat that you put inside the wall. They take it as a unit value, the whole wall as an average, right? So you take a two by six wall as maybe now a U value of maybe 15 or 16. I don't know the exact number. It depends on a lot of different criteria. Let's say you're an R16 on average and then you add two inches of EPS, yeah, you'd be somewhat equivalent to this, okay? So, so then you gotta do a little more planning because now you wanna set your joists system and your floor system back two inches. And same with your wall. So you have this wall. Now, this is another thing that we could get crazy technical about. I don't know the full code in relation to the EFA system, which is the exterior insulated finishing system. So what I'm gonna say is just spouting out, you know, some things that I do know, but you know, there's, this is a whole other ball game in itself. I'm not, we're not going into the details of how to do this. We're just gonna challenge, can you get this to meet an ICF wall and is it still worth it, even if it is less money? Got this, I've set it back two inches. I've had to put a whole lot more forethought into this, by the way. So I got a drip cap here, and you know, I have a window in here, so I got a drip cap that, and then I got a, I got a paper, I got to protect my wood, so I got to watershed everything properly, peel and stick, all that, or you follow the EFIS guidelines, I don't know what those are exactly, then you add your two inches of foam, okay? You have two inches of foam, and now you, you know, you've, you've stopped some thermal bridging, and you know, in my mind, you get you've gained a whole bunch of steps versus ICF. But hey, you know, if it's still cheaper, that's cool. All right. So let's say you have an R22 bat in your wall. So then we have poly, right? We got a poly or vapor barrier, the warm side. How much research has been done saying that all these layers of protection and the two-inch foam does that create? does that create a, a second vapor barrier? And I, I'm pretty sure it does. So you have a vapor barrier here, vapor barrier here, you've trapped moisture. What's that gonna do to your two by six wall? What's, what's that do to wood? It's gonna rot it, it's gonna mold it, okay?
okay? But for debate purposes, let's switch to ICF, okay? So here, we've built it, it's cheaper, but you know, have we trapped vapor? Have we not? How do you get rid of it? What's the long-term disadvantages? What's the long-term effects of that, okay? Now we take an ICF wall, okay? The dew point of where the actual condensation will happen is inside the middle of the concrete. All that's gonna do is make your concrete stronger because if it stays moist to some degree, it will always strengthen, keep getting harder and harder and harder, okay? Or what's the worst that would happen? Well, nothing that I can think of. Concrete doesn't rot. You know, concrete will always take moisture and, and release it too, but it's not like moisture is coming through the wall. You're not trapping anything. There's no disadvantages. Let's look at more advantages, okay? Completely simplified your construction build. You take the block, you do your foundation. There's no stripping, there's no nothing to do. There's, you literally stack the block, brace it, pour it. You know, if you're going up to right up to the roof, you have these little hangers. They're called Levan hangers, okay? So they essentially just insert into the wall, stick some rebar through the holes, you pour, but the, the, the beauty part about these is you still maintain your continuous insulation. You're not interrupting your insulation. If you look at this, there's lots of interruptions, okay? The other thing that keeps it very simple is, you know, we have these snap ties that are every eight inch on center. So those are designed to take the force of concrete, you know, because it needs to withstand that while you pour. But then every eight inches you have these ties. You can attach drywall to it, you can attach your cement board or your vinyl siding or stucco. Very simple, it's built into the system. You, you take a system like this, okay, I wanna do cement board siding or hardy plank. Now what do you do? You have two inches of foam and cement board's heavy. You can't just use longer nails. It's gonna sag and it's gonna do some funky chicken on you. I don't, I've never actually had to do that because I'm an ICF guy. I don't know how you combat that, but I would think you'd have to strap it out with some strapping again. Well, once again, you've added another step. ICF, it's built in, right? So this, the more you look at it, the less of an advantage it is. You know, there's a lot more things I'm gonna debate. I'm gonna throw some more ICF videos on my channel, but just food for thought, just think about it. You know, this is a multi-generational house. I've already said it's disaster proof, wind proof, all that stuff, it's quieter. Continuous insulation, no, no interruptions. You know, even here, you have two inches of foam, but then you still have heat loss and transfer through your studs. So you only have like an R9 or 10 there, and then you still have thermal bridging. So anyway, to the debate, as per our conversation, you know, it was simple as like, well, if they want ICF, just go ICF. You're building a house, if you're gonna live there long-term, you know, spend a few extra bucks, save some money on your utilities as well, heating or cooling. And, uh, you know, it was a simple answer in the end, but it all comes down to how would you build this wall? Will it meet the standard of this? And is it the same thing? I don't know, is it? That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out on some of the following.